Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Art Whisper 88. And as you can see, I have switched my landscape orientation of my plate to a portrait orientation, which I usually do. And in order to do that accurately, I have taken one of my 22 by 30 papers and I cut out exactly the shape of the plate which is 16 by 20 and I've measured the borders here and made sure that they are equal and the same with the top and the bottom like I have mentioned before, I like to make the bottom a little wider to give room for my signature, the edition number, and the date. And usually, since these are uh, monoprints and the unique pieces, I usually do it like this, with one over one. Uh, meaning it's one of a kind. So anyways, this is how I set up my plate on my printing table. And as you can see, I'm going to tilt the camera so you can see the, the top of the registration bar. I have a center line here and that coincides with the center line of the uh, area of the plate. And I have my sidebar here, which is very important. So every time I take a piece of paper and place it down, it will always fall in the same place. So it's a very simple but effective way to get your prints to be consistent. So anyway, I, I uh, got that out of the way. That's the technical information. So now I uh, will proceed to the print itself. Now I'm taking inspiration since it's going to be close to Valentine's Day. I'm taking an inspiration from the format of this card. This is a eight of hearts. And I am uh, going to do a composition on the theme of hearts. Um, not to be very literal to copy this. Uh, I have my own idea. So I have cut these uh, leftover scraps of paper and these are modified heart shapes, as you can see. And I've cut them in half and I thought they would make very interesting geometric compositions. So I will assemble them on the plate. Okay, I think this will work. 
as an arrangement. And so the first thing I will do is take a photograph and make a tracing of this and apply a first layer. So uh, back in a few minutes. So I'm just going to improvise by using a clear sheet of plastic. This is just a uh, sheet of clear plastic that was a protective cover. And I will reuse it as a cheat sheet. Now this is, okay, it's a double layer, but that's okay. Okay, now that I have that as my map, I'll just put this aside and collect these guys. Now this time I'm not using the reusable stencils. These are a one use uh, since they are copy paper. Since I have so much uh, scrap paper, so by using this, I'm going to reverse it. Okay, on to my next step. I thought I might give a black outline to these shapes with this uh, golden high flow acrylic. And it's a very fluid type of paint, kind of like an ink. And I'm gonna give it a try.
let me just uh, test this on a scrap okay Okay. I'm going to proceed to take these off. So I will be left with the outline of this, these stencils. And in turn, this gets air dried. So I can apply a second layer of paint. So I'm going to use my desk fan and I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, now the uh, ink layer I think has dried. So now I'm going to proceed to apply a first layer of color and I'm going to do this sequence of colors. The top layer will be copper followed by cadmium red followed by cadmium red deep and this is mortum violet. I will start from the top one of my favorite colors is copper and then the middle will be cadmium red and on to a deeper shade this is cadmium red deep and violet which is a color I very rarely use but I thought it would be appropriate for this so I'm going to start with the copper blending into the uh, cadmium red. I, I can see that the initial ink layer has dried very well. off 
offload some color here. So God is aside. And I just like to keep everything tidy. So this is a sheet of Stonehenge. And hopefully the first coat of ink will transfer. And I have been advised by many viewers that it's okay to leave the paper on for a very long time. I've even had advice that I should leave it overnight. But uh, since I'm doing a uh, filming, I think maybe 20, 30 minutes will be enough. So let's see how this goes. So I will be back in about 10, 15 minutes and check on it. I, I noticed the, the uh, paper is beginning to wrinkle a little bit because it's absorbing the water content of the paint. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It means that it's doing what it's supposed to do. Let me just take a peek. I think it uh, did a decent transfer. The top part has a little bald spot. But I do like the gradation of colors, because that's what I was aiming for. Okay. So that is my first layer with the copper blending down into reds and purple. So I will go ahead and air dry this and then play with some stencils. Okay, I was able to clean off the plate and arrange my paper stencils according to the cheat sheet. Now, uh, this is an example of me changing my mind. Uh, I decided to reverse these because I think they'd be more effective. So uh, that's why I like to use this uh, method with the cheat sheet. It gives me more options. Now, if I would place the stencil directly on an inked plate, that's it. I have no... Uh, 
recourse. I have to just print it. I can't change my mind. So anyway, uh, so I've laid these down. I will take off the cheat sheet and start inking the plate with some lighter colors. Uh, I will use some unbleached titanium. Some raw sienna. Some Arctic here for the top. I guess there's not much left. Okay. Now another difference with using paper stencils is the ink tends to dry faster because the paper absorbs a lot of the moisture. So I kind of have to work faster. to use the heel of my brayer to make marks. Just to give some textures. Okay. So now I will start now, since these are not reusable, I will go ahead and dispose of them. They're a lot easier to remove. So all I have to do is press on them um, and I can't, I have to work quickly because they tend to fall apart since they're made of paper. Just make sure my fingers are clean. And here is the first poem with the red and the black lines. 
And this is where the registration plays an important part. I have to make sure that the design falls in the same place. Now I'm, I've uh, gotten some comments as well from some viewers that uh, there are other artists who like to soak the paper or moisten the paper. Uh, I don't know if that applies to gel printing. Uh, first of all, the paper I'm using is uh, it becomes uh, not as strong when it's wet and I'm afraid that it will fall apart if I start pulling the paper while it's wet. So I'm going to stick to my method of 10 to 15 minutes tops. Now I can see the advantage of having a moist paper if you have a printing press because what the printing press does, it, it forces the ink into the paper at great force uh, per square inch. But this is just a, uh, a very light version of printing press. I'm just using my hand. So let's see what we got. I think the textures are interesting. No, I, I was intending the outlines to correspond to the shapes, but uh, it turns out it doesn't, but I like the result. Pretty cool, if you ask me. Um, I like the contrast of the uh, light colors against the red and I'll have to decide uh, if it needs any collage after I air dry this. So I will be right back. So don't go away. Okay, back from a short break, I was able to play with my scraps. Uh, I took the printout of the Eight of Hearts and placed them in some strategic places. And the same thing with my copy paper, which I offloaded the uh, purple paint. So that goes I've got it backwards. So, and this is also a scrap of the scribble paper that I have a lot of. I thought that would go well here. 
So before I forget where they are supposed to go, I'm going to mount them with my Mod Podge. So I will start with the tissue paper. So this is like half of a heart shape. This little guy here, which is an upside down heart. Now, uh, I think when you do collage, it's best to be very spontaneous. Um, I think it keeps the idea fresh. Sometimes when you over plan and when you overthink things, it doesn't work out very well. Um, and my method of working is I try what I feel will work and then if if I don't think that it will work I change things on the fly um, and I make decisions fairly quickly especially when you are working with things that dry quickly you have to be decisive and act fast. So this little eight, which I'm very fond of this number, Uh, echoes the layout of a playing card where you have the numbers on the corners. There, I think I'm gonna call that finished. It went as smoothly as I, I mean more smoothly than I expected. I usually expect to run into problems. So, let me show you a close up. of the detail. So it is an assembly of heart shapes or sections of heart shapes that I've made into a composition inspired by a playing card. And those are the marks of the heel of the uh, brayer. And I think they are very effective in creating texture to create interest in the print. And then the first layer of ink lines create this sense of depth that something is behind, something is in front. 
So that is my Valentine's Day themed print inspired by the Eight of Hearts playing card. I hope you like this uh, video. Please uh, press the like button. And thank you so much for viewing, subscribing, and I appreciate whatever donations you can give to my PayPal account to help keep this channel afloat. Thank you again for watching, and I hope to see you next time.